Oh my goodness, free PlayStation 5 for everyone. What's up YouTube, how goes it? So you may remember a few months ago, we actually did a comprehensive video showing the capabilities of the LiDAR scanner on the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max. You guys found that video to be super interesting. I'm glad you did. But a lot of you made some interesting points in the comment section, such as, hey, try doing so and so to get better results. So if you said, I wanna see how it performs in a couple of months from then to see if it's been improved in any way or form. So I took all that feedback into consideration and I decided to revisit the LiDAR scanner on the iPhone 12 Pro to see if there's been any improvements to the various software updates that have been made to the 3D scanner app. So as always in this video, we're gonna do a few more unique scans to see if they're any better than the last ones. By the way, if you are interested in the original video, you can find the link above or in the description below. As always guys, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to my channel. It means a lot to me. Let's get started. For our very first test, I wanted to do something straight and simple. So I took a LiDAR scan of this wall picture. As you can see, it's basically a single dimensional rectangular shape. So there's not a lot of complexity going on and the picture is entirely on a flat surface. Upon scanning it, which was a pretty fast process, again, because of the singular dimensions, we found right away that the image was perfectly clear. It had a one-to-one -one dimension, as you see right next to it, it's perfectly lined up. And if you put it right on top, it's the exact same thing. Also, if you zoom in, you can see that the object clarity is perfect. The picture seems to be in a high quality scan and there were no problems whatsoever. For our next test, I decided that I would do the world a favor since the PlayStation 5 is out of supply almost everywhere. I would make a bunch of 3D scans and give it to everyone. Anyway, because of this ambitious journey, I just had to scan the PlayStation 5. Now all jokes aside, as you can see, the PlayStation 5 has a relatively rectangular shape. However, it does have more groups, edges, curves, and uneven surfaces. So I figured the LiDAR scanner would have a greater challenge in trying to capture the whole thing. And not to my surprise, you can see that while the software does a great job at capturing the parameters of the device, it does start struggling in capturing the areas where there's a lot of grooves and edges. So here is the final image scan of the PlayStation 5. As you can see, it looks like an abomination or a science experiment that went wrong. But seriously, while the dimensional aspects are pretty accurate, so the length, width, and height are right on par with the original, it seems the object detail clarity is diminished significantly because of the complexity of the structure. So you can see in areas where there are too many things going on, the structure kind of molded into the singular image. And that seems to be a common problem with the LiDAR scanner. It has a hard time dealing with complex shapes, which is understandable to a degree. But once again, these are some of the biggest limitations of the LiDAR scanner on the 12 Pro. For our next object, I decided to capture the PlayStation 5 controller. The reason I did this one is because it has a lot of rounded corners. It has a fairly complex shape and it's a relatively small object. And as you can see that the scanner is having somewhat of a hard time capturing the exact details. However, it does a pretty good job of defining the parameters of the controller itself. Here's the final scan of the controller. As you can see, the LiDAR scanner did a pretty good job at capturing the image quality. It's fairly clear and consistent. Now, the dimensional accuracy, ironically, was somewhat off. I think that might be because of the way I captured it. But once again, you can see that the LiDAR scanner doesn't struggle as much with rounded corners. It actually has a pretty easy time at capturing image details there. So I guess it's edges that make it more difficult. For our final Final object, I decided to scan these tulips. The reason I did that is because they are fairly complex in their shape. There's a lot of edges going on, a lot of uneven surfaces, and a lot of inconsistencies in the overall surface area of the device. Immediately, you can see the LiDAR scanner software does a fantastic job at defining the parameters of the actual object itself. Where it struggles immediately, however, is in defining the edges, curves, and grooves. There's just a lot going on here, and I can already tell the LiDAR scanner is having a hard time keeping up. Despite this, I tried to do a pretty pretty detailed move around the object to make sure I capture as much detail as possible. So the final result is something you would not want to give to your significant other. It's basically a giant blob. With that being said though, once again, the dimensional accuracy shown by the LiDAR scanner is amazing. The, both the height, length, and width seem to be pretty much on par with the original object. I love that. However, you can see right away that because of all the inconsistencies, edges, and grooves, the LiDAR scanner struggled greatly to capture great image clarity. And you can see that, especially in the top side of the tulip are kind of mushed together into this singular object. And I'm not surprised at this again, but this just shows that the LiDAR scanner struggles to capture more complex shapes at the moment. And this is a great limitation of the current scanner you'll find on the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max. 
Overall though, I'm not disappointed by the result. It's not horrendous by any means. It's just not groundbreaking at the moment. So these were all the quick scans I basically took to see if they've improved since my original video back a couple months ago. I would say there are minor improvements, but more of them have to do with the actual software itself. The software, for example, runs a lot smoother. It's more optimized and it doesn't heat up my phone nearly as much as it did way back then. So with that being said, yes, it has gotten slightly better, but nothing too dramatic. It seems that the LiDAR scan on the iPhone 12 Pro still struggles with more complex objects, in particular ones that have a sharp edge. It just cannot capture that level of detail yet. But that's okay. This is a first generation product on the iPhone series, and that's understandable. This should not be confused with a time of flight sensor that you find on many other phones. That is an entirely different technique, which ultimately tries to derive a similar result. But it's just worth mentioning that a lot of people in the comment section should be confused between a time of flight scanner and a LiDAR scanner. They are different techniques. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick demo of the LiDAR scanner. If you do enjoy my content in general, please consider subscribing to my channel. I promise I do my absolute best to bring quality content for you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Soul of Tech, logging out.